Hi, this is CB, and in this tutorial I'm going to call it Brushes 101 in Photoshop. And here we've got, I'm going to turn that off for a minute, we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, this is for Photoshop, it will work pretty much the same in Photoshop Elements, this part of the tutorial, because the brushes will be handled the same in both programs. So, I I've got CS2 open here, and if you've never picked the brush tool in CS or CS2 or Elements or whatever, in CS2 at least, it's right here on the toolbar toolbox, excuse me, I keep wanting to call it a toolbar, and when I hover over it you see the shortcut pops up, it says the B key. So if you're ever unsure exactly where it is on your version of Elements or, or Photoshop, just hit the B key and that will bring you into that. In fact, I'll do that right now just to show you. Now it's clicked on it and we have the brush options up at the top. So two things before we start actually brushing, I'm going to mention that the brush will use your foreground color to paint with. Right now I have black chosen as my foreground color. If I were to click on this, the color picker comes up and I could choose any other color. I'd hit OK and then it would be that and I would be painting in that color. But I'm going to go ahead and use black. The other thing I want to mention is that pretty much always when you're, not always, but almost every time you work with brushes, you'll want to work on a brand new layer. Keep your brush strokes on a separate layer. It makes it a little more easy to manipulate them and make changes if you need to. So here's my new layer icon in CS2. It's up at the top of the layers palette when you're using elements. But now I have a new layer to work with. So let's talk about this particular brush I have selected. I have a, a round, simple round brush from the basic brushes set loaded. Right here it says 60. That's the size in pixels. It's a 60 pixel brush. When I click this little down arrow, you'll see a little menu come out that shows you all the brushes that I have in this particular set, this basic brushes set. And this particular set starts with, it's really only one brush with two variations, or however you want, two different types of this one circle brush. We have the hard edge brushes here at the top, and then you can tell we've got the softer brushes with blurry edges down at the bottom, and it's all just in different sizes of that same brush. Now if you don't have this loaded already, this little triangle or right arrow here that you would click on brings out a fly out menu here. You can load or replace brushes and that will get you other brush sets that's on your computer perhaps that you bought. Look for brushes with the ABR extension on them, that's Photoshop brushes. But there are also brushes that come preloaded into Photoshop and Elements. That's all these, this list down here at the bottom. Here's the basic brushes that I mentioned that I have already. So. I have the 60 pixel brush hard edge loaded and I'm ready to paint on a new layer. There's two ways to work with brushes. One is just like you would a paintbrush where I click, hold the mouse button down and just start drawing on the screen. I can, for instance, write my name out if I wanted to. Everybody knows my name now, right? <laughs> so let me delete that layer off again and show you the next way to work with brushes and that is just by clicking, single clicking with the mouse and in this case since we have this simple circle brush it's just going to put down little dots on the screen. See when I click we've got little dots. The reason that that's working, how this is working where I've got, when I draw out I've got a line rather than dots is because what it's putting down is a whole bunch of these circles all crammed together so closely that it's making a straight line. I'll talk about spacing in the other tutorial and how that would work so that you could draw a line of dots. Let me get rid of this layer again and put a new one down. And I'll talk about that fact that when you're drawing also you can draw a straight line fairly easily. I can't draw a straight line freehand really to save my life even if I tried. Look, that's pretty lousy. <laughs> so, But if you wanted to make a simple straight line as soon as you click the mouse button down and hold it, hold your shift key down and continue to hold it. Now you'll see that even when I move my cursor outside that the line area, it's going to constrain it to a straight line. That also works if you wanted to go up and down. Again, hold your shift key down and you can move a little bit as you're drawing. It's still going to keep it in a nice straight line. So one more thing to talk about in this tutorial is the opacity because this is pretty important with brushes. I'm going to put another new layer here and put this text layer on because it will be easier to demonstrate with this text layer here. Normally when you have 100% opacity that means you, when you start painting with your brush you will not be able to see the layers below it. If you think of it in terms of ink, 
Think of it like you're putting down the maximum amount of ink, so much so that you can't see what's below it. See, when I start drawing now, I can cover up this letter right here. But if I lower my opacity, now you can think of it as putting down less ink, and I can see the layer below it. And if I continue to paint, you know, brush strokes over it, it starts putting down more and more ink, so it becomes less and less likely that you're going to see what's below it. So that's how the opacity works. And you can also, of course, adjust the opacity of the layer itself if you have your brush strokes written on a separate layer, like I recommend to see when I start lowering it down now, that that opacity of this particular one where you couldn't see through this before, now you can see through it a little bit. So it just gives you a few options of working with your opacity. You can either use that but or make sure that each brush stroke is uh, just a little bit opaque. And then I put that back up for just the fact that I usually have it at 100%, but you never know when you're going to need it a little bit lower. It's always nice to know. So this is Brushes 101. Hope it's helped you get a little comfortable with the brush tool. I'm CB, and thanks for watching.